I do not like to river trace alone, and I recommend that nobody river traces alone you know, because it's dangerous. Hey everybody, I am river tracing alone now. I do not have any friends here. So less than 48 hours ago, did this whole river on a kayak. Fantastic absolute adventure but so I just got out to um, fly the drone and I realized I don't have my phone with me I think that I left it at uh, that place we had lunch which is um, seven kilometers up the river so not getting that today I'm gonna have to take an extra day I guess to uh, go back and look for that I just I uh, hope it doesn't rain, I guess, next two days. Nothing I can do. Damn. I left my phone somewhere. We, we, we sat down, we had lunch. I took out my phone, I played with it, sat it down, and didn't put it back in the bag when we left. <laughs> my phone, I think, I think, is sitting on a rock about six kilometers ahead, which means I have a 12 kilometer trace there and back by myself. I don't particularly like it because I don't like tracing alone. I think that tracing alone is dangerous because it's very easy to slip and fall. It's just something's minor. You twist your leg. You have a friend with you, there's a lot that can be done. You don't have a friend with you, well, maybe you're just stuck somewhere, you can't even get out. Maybe you're fine, you can walk, you're just, just your foot's caught somewhere. So, the name of the game today is Caution. We're gonna try to do everything careful. We're not taking any risks. We're not going to do anything fancy. If we get to a place and it looks maybe okay to cross, but not that great, and we have to trace back a long way before there's an easy place to cross, we'll trace back. It's worth spending the extra time to just play everything safe. So that's what we're gonna do. The good news is, is I've already seen the river. The bad news is, is that even though I just did the river, we did 32 and a half kilometers, and so it, it all kind of runs together. I don't really know what's up there, but I know that uh, it should be okay at least. There was one spot where we had to cross the river and go down with ropes. I mean, we kayaked through it, but if you were walking, you'd have to cross the river and go down with ropes. Looks like an easy place to cross here. I wonder if this is to my advantage. Huck, there's a road up here. I was trying so hard to find that road. Completely failed. I'm at the very last farm. Uh, but we're, we're so high above the river and I don't see a path down. There's no way to get down. I have like so much anxiety. I don't want to say addicted to my phone. It's just... In this situation, when I don't have a phone, I get really anxious. There's somebody's pants here. You think that means there's like a naked person up there? I mean, I, it's understandable to forget a phone, right? Like the phone, it's small, you know, you put it down and it goes in your bag. But how do you forget your pants? Like, how far do you have to walk before you realize you're not wearing pants? Pretty far, evidently, because I don't see anybody. Now I know why they call it Beigangshi. There's just so much metal in the river. This is the first time I got in the water, so it's a little bit cold, but then my, my wetsuit will start to warm it up. It is a chilly day today. It's sunny, like there is some sun, so I'm pretty lucky there, but it's much colder today than it was the last two days. So it was colder at night, so the water's colder and the air's colder. Everything's colder more landslide areas, rock fall areas. Just try to cross it as quickly as possible. Don't dilly dally. Beautiful river though, wow. Oh, this will be so much faster in a kayak. Oh. All right, I'm floating. All right, that was deep. Remember that waterfall? That was the first waterfall we came to. Woohoo! 
fast horses saw like 12 along the way. You can see here in the beginning there's just not that much water but as you go further down and down like each of these little waterfalls that comes in it raises the river level you know by just that much but it, it adds up over 30 kilometers for sure. So after the trip we kind of remarked to each other like wow we didn't see much trash but actually it's because we're just flying through the center of the river and all of the trash is getting deposited on the banks. I mean I'll go back in the river next time it rains but you know as the water level goes down the, the light stuff particularly plastics will get stuck on the on the side somewhere not indefinitely of course plastic lasts forever which is why it's stupid and we shouldn't be making it or using it uh, for anything it'll stay temporarily on the sides until the sun and stuff breaks it down into smaller and smaller pieces or or it makes its way to the ocean metal on the other hand will just stay in the middle and poke right up until you crash into it yeah Check it out, you can really clearly see how the water's moving there. It goes in there and then it comes around. It's dug out that little bowl. Pretty fun. I think I stopped there uh, on the way down to wait for uh, other people. I think I see people up there. They're not moving, but they're just sitting on the raw. But the color just doesn't look like nature, so it's too beige. You don't see that much beige. Right, let's get a closer look. Nice to see that I'm not alone in the wilderness. I wonder if they're wearing pants. Catching kuhua says they're not big. You lie, you shall. Fish are getting smaller. Could be due to just overfishing and could also be due to loss of habitat and all those dams and stuff like that blocks the river and it prevents the fish's natural migration patterns and also pollution uh, especially the stuff from the farms that runs off into the water and the chemicals and plastic so uh, can affect the hormones of the fish it can prevent them from breeding properly yet another thing that can affect the fish population are these kind of shoes can potentially damage the rivers. They can carry fish diseases, aquatic diseases, or tiny vertebrates, eggs. They can, they can carry them from one river to another river, or from one part of the river to another part of the river. It can infect fish population. So in America, a lot of places are illegal. And for nine and a half years, I refused to wear them. I only wore sandals. But the quality of the sandals that are available on the market is less and less. You know, they break the first time you use them basically. I've approached some shoe companies but they haven't shown any interest in producing nice good sandal in Taiwan that won't affect the environment. So this year for the first time a couple months ago I started using these felt shoes in the in the river. My opinion they're not as good as a good pair of sandals. Even environmental concerns aside I just don't think they provide as much port and traction as, ooh, see, see, I just almost slipped there on it, on it, on a dry rock. I don't think they apply as much traction and support as a pair of shoes with really hard rubber bottoms. I think it's stupid, but there's nothing else available in the market. I just give up. I'm not gonna wage a one-man crusade to try to get people to stop wearing them. As long as people don't have interest in other options, then there's not gonna be other options in the market, and I can't create my own. So now I'm wearing felt shoes too. I do wish it wasn't this way though. What can you do? Unbelievable how much metal is in this river. Unfucking believable. It's so much. Everywhere you look, it's metal. Like thousands and thousands of pieces of metal. Why? Why? Now I've uh, breached a landmark that I recognize. This must be halfway or something. Okay, up ahead I see that rope. It's strung across the river. I should be on the other side. Oh, there's a big rock here. That was pretty fun on the kayak. Only issue is that that tree at the end is terrible. We all got caught up in it. It wasn't a good way through it. Wouldn't have been easy to carry the bags around this part, so I just go through it, but shit. So 
this is something interesting. Look, look how much trash is here. We're about 10 meters above the riverbed right now. Just huge amounts of trash up here, and it looks like it floated up here and then landed here. You can see there's wood like that too. You also look at the riverbed and you look at where the grass starts. So all along the edge there, there's no grass until about uh, 12 to 15 meters up. And it's like that way on both sides. So that tells me you do not want to be here in a flood. Not at all. This, you know, wide, ri wide river gets funneled into a small area. And this river, which is now like a meter, deep, you know, shallower in some places. Just like 15 centimeters deep there, about two meters there. It goes all the way up. It would be, you know, 15 meter deep river and moving fast. Holy shit. Oh, the power of it is just mind boggling, staggering. I've been walking for a long time now. I don't actually know how long because I don't have a watch, but the sun's moved a little bit and judging by how hungry I'm getting. I think that I must have done at least 90 minutes. Don't know how long I've gone and I don't know how long I have left. That's just the nature of it. Just enjoy the hike, I guess. Just let the current take me, but not over anything. About here, I think, is good. This setup I have here is that it actually works really well. I have the which uses a nylon and elastic mix and super super good like fabric is so important guys like everything is about fabric and this fabric is very expensive actually actually just the fabric to make these things cost us more than like you know the finished product you get at the Cathalon for like a shuimui you can feel the difference in quality that's why I'm always wearing these shirts because it's just the best for it it's just just you know, it keeps you warm, it keeps you cool. This is really good at regulating body temperature. And then over it, I have a three millimeter wetsuit vest. And then over that, I have a life jacket. The life jacket locks the wind. The wetsuit keeps me pretty warm. And then I get a little bit of extra bonus from having the Shui Mui. And the Shui Mui dries really fast. So like once I'm out of the water, my body temperature dries it. What is going on here? Why is there so many pants? I feel like there's going to be a whole group of naked people running around this river. Anyway, I got distracted. The point is, I'm actually very comfortable right now, even though it is pretty cold and it is windy. And I'm wet. This, this, this setup works awesome. I much prefer this than using a full wetsuit because this keeps my arms free. Like the Shui Mui, it really gives me a lot of mobility with my hands. Whereas the wetsuit, it really restricts it. It makes your arms so tired. Long story short, these are awesome and I recommend them. Practice what I preach, so I always wear them, and you can find a link at the bottom. And also, that goes to help out the show, so I appreciate that. I can see it, I can see the waterfall that we had lunch at. I hope that my phone is there. I don't actually know it's there. That's just the last place I saw it. Wow, really, fingers crossed. Oh, and it's in the sun. Okay, that's, that's why we uh, stopped there for lunch. Let's see if we can find a little black piece of metal and plastic. Oh, I really, really hope it's there because it's at the next place we stopped. I don't think I can get it. One is I don't even know where that is. We didn't save the GPS. And also, it just might be too far, especially for a solo trip. Let's come kayaking through here again, which honestly, I don't want to do. I had so much fun. It's such an amazing trip, but I don't want to do it again. Holy shit, I see it. Look at that. Don't kiss your phone, it's just a product. It doesn't define who you are. It's just, just an object. It's not turning on. Uh, I hope that means that it's just um, turned itself off, maybe because it ran out of battery or heat from the sun. I hope it's not because the dew killed it. Let's uh, stop, have some lunch, try to charge it up, and see how things go. It turned on, 0% battery. So here's my plan. I'm just gonna crush up the palm end and put it in my tuna can. It's so windy. Alright guys, thanks a lot for going on this hike with me. It was really nice to have 
somebody to talk to. Um, you know, wasn't didn't really feel like I was walking alone when I was recording. <coughs> well, that's uh, about me as dry as water. <coughs> anyway, I'm gonna finish my lunch and then I'll head back. So thanks a lot. And unless something bad happens on the way, this will be the end of the video. I mean, something really cool could happen too. I don't know. Unless something really bad or really cool happens on the way back, this will be the end of the video. So go watch the next one already. It's right here. You see it? That one's a good one. It's really exciting. I recommend it. This one's not bad either.